All right. Uh, thank you very much for being here. I, I'm uh, a little dizzy. I was under anesthesia most of the afternoon. So uh, all I wanted to say is that uh, essentially, uh, so you know, I, I came to Rafi uh, around 19, 1980 when I was uh, still in the army. And uh, the reason, I mean, I was a physicist. Actually, I did my, my master's thesis in, astrophys in astrophysics. And during my military service, I was actually attracted to information theory. And I was uh, very much interested in uh, someone who can combine dynamics with information. This became my passion uh, since then. And uh, after asking a few, a few friends around, especially Yoram El Hasid, who, who was a student of Rafi just before me, and we studied together in the undergraduate in physics and math. And um, he told me, you know, Rafi Levin, uh, although he's a chemist, he actually knows quite a lot about quantum mechanics and about information. <laughs> and maybe you should uh, come to him. So um, the rest is more or less history. I mean, it was actually quite an interesting uh, encounter. I mean, I, I met him while I was still in the middle of uh, managing a very big, big, big project in the intelligence. And slowly but surely, Rafi pushed me into this uh, a uh, very intriguing question of how do you simplify complex dynamical systems, both classical and quantum mechanical. And you know, he had this idea that you should essentially uh, use maximum entropy one way or another in order to, to simplify the complex dynamics. And you know, this was for me, uh, you know, it looks like you, know, you just have to play a little bit with Hamiltonian dynamics and with um, maybe master equations and a few other cases. And we had already the PhD of Yoram, which was quite elegant in the sense <coughs> that he actually formulated a, a very elegant algebraic condition for the ability to simplify complex dynamical systems. But it took me about three years to understand that what he was actually talking about is what we now call integrable systems, where essentially there is a low dimensional a manifold on which the dynamic slides, and if it's an integrable system, so there was this was there was this nice algebraic condition that the observable should form some sort of closed algebra with the Hamiltonian of the system. And for literally 30 years uh, since then, I'm trying to understand. I was trying to understand better what's behind it. And I must say that. Uh, I'm happy to tell you, Rafi, in this very happy occasion that uh, I, I managed to solve the problem of my PhD eventually, <laughs> which means that uh, after many, many years of thinking about it, I mean, my problem is that I'm a slow thinker, but I, I am a very persistent. I, mean, I think for many years. <laughs> and uh, eventually, I realized that uh, this is actually a very deep question. I mean. Uh, so essentially, un, uh, uh, really recovering conditions, general conditions, under which general Hamiltonian or non-Hamiltonian dynamics can be simplified by very few degrees of freedom, is actually, it echoes with several interesting mathematical questions that I'm sure many of you appreciate. So you know, at the time in the 70s, there was uh, this Swansig mori formalism, which really allowed us in some very formal way to project high dimensional dynamics to low dimensions. But unfortunately, this was non-tractable in any way that we can. Now, after being a computer scientist for so, so long, I know what I mean by intractability. I mean, this was a hard problem in general. And there was actually no chance we could actually simplify this in any, in any simple way. But what happens also during my PhD, there was a, a good friend that I miss here, which is Joel Tikuczynski. <laughs> and and Joel Tikuczynski, who, who did some sort of sabbatical with, with Rafi, uh, got me interested in this, this statistical notion that is known as minimal sufficient statistic. A minimal sufficient statistic is a very general statistical uh, property of the, which exists for very special distribution when you can actually capture the complexity of a big sample by very few variables. Precisely. For example, if you have a Gaussian sample and you are interested in the mean of the distribution, it's enough to average the sample. 
So the sample mean contains exactly all the information about the mean of the distribution than every instance. This turns out to be the key to a very general story, which during my time at Bell Labs in the 80s and then later on in the early 90s when I was at Princeton and UPenn and many other places in the US, we managed to formulate <coughs> in, in a very general way, which, is, uh, which I could then call and still call the information bottleneck method, which essentially try to compress the representation of your data as much as you can without losing the information about what you care about. And we managed to, find, I have some slides, but I think it's not important. <laughs> you can follow the techniques. If you don't follow what I say, you, you'll not follow the slides as well. So essentially, this idea of simplifying the dynamics by compressing the representation while preserving as much as possible information about what you care about was a variational problem. And I must say that uh, my first paper with Rafi in 1983 or 4 was about variational approach to uh, minimal uh, complexity reduction in some sense. And this was really the key. I mean, eventually I just followed this track in finding a very general variational approximation to this minimal sufficient statistic problem. And now, why I'm telling you this, I mean, I've not been doing chemical physics since uh, 1985. Sorry, I don't want to destroy everything here. And I, I am, uh, I'm not even doing physics, I mean, I'm, since the, the late, the early 90s. Uh, but you know, something took me on the way of this path of how do you simplify complex data without losing all the irrelevant detail and still keep the essence of the problem. And this turned out to be one of the most important, uh, and I don't think I exaggerate too much, when I say one of the key uh, scientific questions of this generation. Because essentially, it turned out to lie behind the technique that we now call, uh, or the methodology that we now call machine learning. And machine learning is nothing but take large data and extract simple rules that somehow describe it uh, statistically. Now, I use exactly this formulation, the, the variational approach that I learned from Rafi and eventually turned into this information theoretic principle, which, which, which is essentially a trade-off between compression and accuracy, or, or complexity and accuracy, if you want. And it turned out to be uh, one of the key uh, general principles behind uh, what we call machine learning today. And recently, I mean, the last few years, uh, this particular principle, which I really track back all the way to my discussions with Rafi, and some of them are actually not very easy because I really didn't understand what he wants. <laughs> and, and I'm sure that Rafi still remembers it. But uh, it took me a while. And this particular principle, the information bottleneck method, is now becoming the, the most uh, complete or comprehensive theory of this uh, very intriguing phenomena that we call deep learning. So deep learning is essentially a method based on neural networks, which is one way of very large dimensional space, I mean a lot of parameters, that allow us to extract very simple rules and extremely precise predictions about data, and that's why it's so successful. This is essentially a method which is now revolutionizing the world as I was saying here uh, two weeks ago. <laughs> and uh, including chemistry, by the way, I mean, it's everywhere. I mean, it is like, this is like cancer, it goes everywhere and it affects everything. <laughs> and, and deep learning is one of those miraculous techniques which, where you train a very high dimensional parametric space, and somehow surprisingly, against every law of statistics, this high, this case of dimensionality doesn't imply, and we are still able to control it. And the reason we're able to control it is essentially what we are attracting is some sort of minimal sufficient statistics or approximately minimal sufficient statistic, which captures the structure of the data without losing, with, with losing all the irrelevant data. Essentially, this is very much like separation of time scales in dynamics. I mean, you, you average over the very fast variables and you keep track of only the slow variables. And this is something which is also underneath the notion of integrability, both quantum mechanical and classical and the notion of uh, uh, the ability to simplify dynamical description. And uh, the surprise is that we actually can show to prove today 
the deep learning, in, you have something completely remarkable there, is that the, the size of, we do, instead of having the curse of dimensionality, which we are usually used to, and when you have a very high dimensional system, the problem becomes intractable, we have something which I call the bless of dimensionality, which is this in this high dimensional system, there are actually many, many ways of, of uh, avoiding obstacles. So instead of getting stuck in some local minima, there are always way around obstacles. And in this very high dimension, a process which, again, I, I worked with Rafi, I mean, on diffusion problems and, Marco, and master equations and things like this, you actually, uh, you are able somehow to, uh, through diffusion, through noise, eliminate all the high complexity of the data. And this turns out to be some sort of a miracle because by diffusion, you, you actually simplify the problem uh, in an incredible way. So, okay, this is a long story. I'm actually giving talks about it everywhere, including on Thursday in Berlin and uh, next week in Rio and so on, many, many places. I don't want to... So all the world is now fascinated by this discovery, but I wanted to say here that despite the fact that Rafi and I hardly talked in the last 30 years, <laughs> Uh, this, the, the reasons or the motivation and the, the mathematics that really pushed me to, to this, uh, I believe now, significant uh, understanding of, of very, a very important phenomena, deep learning and learning in general, comes from trying to answer the question that Rafi very you know, nonchalantly gave me as a student. Try to see what are the conditions under which complex dynamics can be simplified. You know, this has been hunting me for many, many years. <laughs> This is obviously a very hard and very difficult question, but it led to incredibly interesting places, not only in computer science. You know, physics institutes now all over the world are opening groups in machine learning because they realize that it's not only a wonderful tool, the theory and the mathematics behind it uh, is some sort of a cousin of statistical physics. And actually, we are now even getting into the realm of what we call quantum machine learning, which is do everything instead of with distribution, do everything with density matrices, and somehow, surprisingly, it simplifies the problem and gives you another dimension of, another very rich dimension, which is also something I learned from Rafi, work with density matrices. So to make a long story short, I, I didn't want to give here another formal talk. I just want to thank you, Rafi, again, for putting me on this track. And even though it took uh, many years, I think it gave, uh, it eventually, uh, led to very interesting things. And uh, congratulations again for the wonderful occasion. I just wish everyone here to be as good and as fresh and as good looking as you are at 80. And uh, I want to thank you again for putting me on this track, although it was, when I finished my PhD, by the way, I was completely miserable because I had the feeling that I have no idea how to solve the basic question of my thesis. And now I at last can say, okay, we are on the right track. Well, thank you very much, Rafi, again, and congratulations.